enjoy. Um, we're starting off with a Meet in the Mods series, so you can get to know some of the server moderators a little bit better, or get to know them for the first time. Uh, lots of people have joined since we've been in lockdown, for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, we're glad everyone t took time to join us this evening. Uh, throughout the interview, feel free to type any questions you'd like me to ask in chat, and I'll pick some here and there as appropriate. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. Is there uh, an echo problem? I'm reading that in chat, but it seems like maybe uh, Dana doesn't have it. So hope things are okay. Oh, God. If it continues to be a problem, let me know, and we will pause things for you. Okay. I've got, I've got it from the pie maker that we don't have an audio problem. So sorry, uh, sorry, Tortoise W. <laughs> I, hope it, I, I hope it kicks out. So. All right, let's start with the very basics. Uh, I've already mentioned one of these things at least, but what are your name and pronouns? My name is Austin Lewis Bailey, a.k.a. Black Daddy Bowser, a.k.a. Black Bowser, DJ Bow Bow, whatever Bowser-related thing you want to call me. My pronouns are he, him. Thank you, girl. <laughs> Perfect. What are you planning to play on stream today? Um, right now I'm playing League of Legends ranked. Um, it might change. Who knows? It's like a variety stream. I think that's what they call them when they switch games. Okay. Sounds good to me. Um, I'll be asking you a bunch of questions, so I look forward to watching you play games while we do that. Um, I want to start with sort of an icebreaker. Uh, I'm going to do a series of rapid-fire questions that will give some Ooh. people a chance to kind of flood in. So just, like, answer the first thing that comes to mind. Is it not that serious? So it's pretty easy. Um, I'm going to have, like, three rounds of them. I'm going to give you a second to breathe in between each round. Um, <gasps> So as you're uh, picking your lanes and such. All right. Um, so to start off, what's your favorite color? Indigo. What's but the like best smell? The that... proper indigo. OK. What's the best smell to have wafting through your home? Ooh, I don't know. It's rapid fire. You got to answer. Uh, I was going to say gasoline because that was the first thing that came to mind. That's, that's that like sounds it. beautiful to me. Just take that answer and run with it. Who's your favorite comedian? Don't have oh, oh Zainab Johnson. Okay, <laughs> I want to hear more about that later. Best video game character of all time. Ooh, the character from Dead Cells. Is that okay. Uh, if you could go anywhere in the world for a visit tomorrow, where would it be? <sighs> Everything's coroned, but if it wasn't coroned, <laughs> I guess we're accepting that. <laughs> hmm, Tokyo. <laughs> Tokyo, perfect. Who's your celebrity crush? I don't have one. I don't have one. That's fine. That's an answer. That's the first round. So we got okay. two more of those to go. <laughs> so I'll give you a second to catch your breath. Uh, Oni, Oni says the smell of gasoline is A+. Plus, so that was a good answer. <laughs> like, the, well, the, like the exhaust pipe from like the car? I don't know. I kind of like that smell. Exhaust. Okay. That's the revised yeah. answer. Okay. We'll accept that. It's like, okay. it'll kill you, but like, I'm into it. <laughs> That's like what I look for in a significant other, right? It'll kill you, but I'm into it. <laughs> okay. That was, that was a little about me, sorry. <laughs> Jumping the gun. No, okay, so next round. What's the worst fruit? Uh, what is that fruit? That fruit that smells bad? Durian? No, it's not the worst fruit, but I'm going to say durian. <laughs> Perfect. What's the best vegetable? Best vegetable? But it's a potato vegetable. If you want it to be, it's rapid fire. <laughs> sure, let's go with potato. <laughs> What's the best way to eat an Oreo? Oreos are gross. <laughs> Perfect. The filling. Which goes, in, <laughs> which goes in first, the cereal or the milk? Um, definitely the cereal. <laughs> right answer. Uh, what's the best dessert of all time? Uh, Stroop waffle. Favorite breakfast food? Pizza? <laughs> Coffee or tea? Tea. How do you take your tea? Uh, I have a bunch of I, honey, agave, uh, nectar, something. <laughs> straight. Sugar. <laughs> straight. Sure. Straight. straight is the wrong way to take anything. <laughs> All right. Um, that was the end of the second series. So I'll give you a second to breathe. <laughs> and then I'll <laughs> take a deep breath. The game is starting soon, I think. Right? Um, uh, we're 60. Yeah, okay, we're gonna start then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> okay. Last series, and then I'll ask you real questions and give you a chance to answer. 
<laughs> What's the worst pickup line you've ever heard? Pickup line? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, ooh. <laughs> I'm not into black guys, but you, you're hot. <laughs> Do you need noise or silence when you sleep? Noise. Okay. What's your D&D class? Bart. How many colors are in the rainbow? Colors? Oh, God. I don't know. Too many. It's Roy <laughs> Biv, so whatever that is. <laughs> iOS or Android? Android. All right, perfect. That's the right um, answer. So I'm into it. All I'm right, have that's both. the <laughs> that's the end of our rapid fire. <laughs> so <laughs> we can dig in a little bit more now. Um, I uh, look forward to this next section because I honestly don't know that I've ever talked to you very much about your background in general. So I feel like <gasps> I'm not. going to learn <laughs> as we as our audience learns about you. Um, so first of all, just starting with the basics, I get to talk in a normal uh, cadence now instead of trying to rush everything. <laughs> oh. um, I'm like trying to slide back into normal speech. Um, where were you born and where did you grow up? I was born in Boston and I grew up in Boston. <laughs> Whereabouts? Um, Dorchester, Dorchester, <laughs> and then I, but also I was in Mecco, so I went to school with the white kids, the rich, which upper middle class, um, Jewish people. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, what is, I don't think I know what Mecco is. Uh, it's like this program that takes, um, basically kids from the, you know, lower, lower class, uh, the, I don't know the blacker areas and puts them in the in the whiter schools. Just they put them in the in the schools that are actually good, because everyone knows that Boston public schools are shit. Okay, fair enough. That's interesting. Uh, I will I actually probably need to learn more about that. Just in general, I'm not from Boston, so I feel like I miss all of these like little things that anyone that grew up here would just know. Um, yeah. So that's fair. That Do you have any siblings or are you an only child? I have two siblings, one older, one younger. I am a middle child. Okay. Uh, interesting. The, how big is the age difference? Two years each. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's very routine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Do you get along with your siblings? No. Oh, I guess now I do, but I didn't before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when did it change? Like late into adulthood or just like when you became adults, it was fine. Um, I mean, I don't really talk to them on the regular, but I interact with them when they interact with me. Um, so I guess it changed when I left for college because I didn't see them every day. And I was like, oh, I didn't really like them. But now that I'm not around them, I guess they're OK. <laughs> I do think. Um... I do think it benefits a relationship greatly to not live with someone in most cases. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, especially siblings. I should like footnote that because that's not entirely, uh, entirely fair in general. Um, how would you describe your parents to folks who haven't met them? Um, my parents. Well, I guess my mom, because I don't really know my dad. Actually, my dad's apparently like me. And that's why we don't get along. So there's that for my dad. I, I um, but my mom's cool, and she's 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 cool black mom. I okay. don't know how to describe her except for like cool black mom. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll take that. That gives an image. I think. Um, so were you the kind of person who enjoyed going to school, or was it more a chore for you when you were a kid and into high school? Um. Into, okay, which which school? <laughs> which grade? Okay, like well, all which of school. One, which ones did you like? What, what was the progression? Um. Well, okay. Because here's the thing: I was in Metco until about halfway through middle school, and then I went to BPS, and then we moved into like the Newtonish area. So I went back to those Newton schools. So I think the Newton schools were fine. Um. They were okay. And then I went to the Boston Public Schools and it was like, ooh, these are bad. This is awful. Like they don't really teach you anything. They just kind of let you, I guess they just, they just let you be a, like just, uh, 
uneducated person and they don't they don't it ugh, i can't oh i mean i can get into it but it's it was really bad just bps is horrible and then once i was out of bps it was like okay again gotcha so you enjoyed going whenever you were you were younger and then older again but the stretch in the middle where you were going to bps was a yes. chore to go because was... you felt like nobody was supported there is that the right idea nobody was supported it was it was it was <laughs> a drastic <laughs> shift because it was like basically right when i got to actually no that was different it was halfway through middle school. I think I got into like literally a fight the first, not even a fight. Some kid punched me in the face for like looking at him and I was just super confused. Like I was just like, he didn't hurt me, but I'm just like, I'm confused. Why are we attacking me? And then um, the high school experience was pretty fun because first of all, in, in Boston, you like sign up for your high school. So it's kind of like college. And I put like a top three schools and I didn't even, I guess, get in to all, either, either three of the schools. So I I didn't know this until I literally arrived at this school. So I get to the school. It's none of the schools that I picked. And I walk in and it's just metal. Like they they have tables that you put your backpack on and they search them in metal detectors. And I'm like, oh, oh, this is like, we're like that. <laughs> That's a pretty intense experience. Yeah. Um, that feels like, um, for me, that feels like something I've only ever seen in like movies. I've never. Oh, it, was, it was very real. I I believe you wholeheartedly. That's just like that's how disconnected it is from reality to me. But it sounds like the day you walked in, it was pretty disconnected from reality previously. Yeah, I was like, well. oh, because like because at that point, I've I've just been consuming, I guess, TV shows, and I didn't really care to like follow the narrative of of I guess general media and everyone. If every show is like high school is the best time of your life. Blah, blah 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 and then you and then i got there and it's like metal detectors bag checks are you smoking weed are you a degenerate black person and i was just like oh my god this is this is awful yeah that sounds like it um so that was the bps period is that yeah it? that was bps period got it okay um what criteria do they you said you ranked your like top three how do they pick whether you get your like ranked schools or not i have no idea to be honest i just put i put things down and i don't know if there was like if they take your mcas scores your because like mcas is like the it's like a weird standard testing here i guess for some reason gotcha yeah but i i don't know the criteria for picking okay whatever it was i didn't (laughs) get so it wasn't it apparently wasn't very transparent (laughs) if it was not clear even having gone through it what it was that's i mean that's fair that's totally reasonable okay um so what sort of activities did you do in middle school high school uh did you have the opportunity to do activities in a school that wasn't supporting its students um well in the in what did i even do in that school i went to classes (gasps) No, I didn't do anything. Um, I didn't really do anything until I got to high school. And then I went home um, and watched anime. But then towards the end of high school, I joined a marathon team and I ran marathons. So that was that was a thing. How many marathons have you run? Three. It's funny because I actually like looked up your BG bio, which I haven't read in like years. I probably like read it when I joined the server because I was curious about the like, you know, final bosses. But mm. um <laughs> But I, I never read it prior to that. And so I, I didn't know that at all. Um, did you run them all like in or after high school or was there like a long span of time? It was like it was like back to back year. So it was like I think I was 17, 18, 19. It was the, okay. second, I was out of high school the last year I ran the marathon. OK, fair enough. Um, are you still a runner? I kind of feel like once a runner, always a runner. Even if you stop running, you still feel like a runner. Um, but... I mean, no. Okay, fair enough. Um, not everything that you do in high school has to last forever, right? Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> fortunately school, for all of us. <laughs> but it's not. It's not my jam. It's 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 a good yeah. social activity. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's totally reasonable. I think you can do things in high school, do social activities, and then be like, that's not what I want to do anymore. <laughs> I think that's totally fair. Um, so what was your, what was sort of your life course after you graduated high school? Did you go to college? What, what all happened? 
Um, I took kind of a gap year where I didn't do anything. Well, I mean, I ran the marathon, but that was kind of it. And then I went to college. I just watched okay. a bunch of anime. That I, I literally didn't do anything aside from running <laughs> that like gap year. A gap year is reasonable. Where did you go to college when you were done with the gap year? I went to Becker College over in Worcester. So I, I literally, I've never left this state. I've never lived outside of the state. I think most people stay in the state they were born in. So that's pretty, pretty typical. What was, what was college like for you? What was the life there? Um, it was, it was pretty cool because I went, cause I was game design major. So I went from like, well, okay, we gotta, we gotta back up a little bit because I had interacted with black people in my neighborhood. Right. And most of them as a black geek, they're like, the fuck are you? What is going on? We don't stand this. So I'm like, okay, I must be like a unicorn, I guess. Because there's, there's no other black geeks here. And then I went to white schools and they're like, you're like the whitest black person we know. And, and like now that shit to me, it's like, oh, wow, that's, you're a terrible person for saying that. But like at the time I was like, yeah, sure. Black people don't like me. Uh, you know, uh, ooh. Yikes. Okay. Black people don't like me. White people think I'm, oh shit. He's really following me. <laughs> okay. Anyway, black people don't like me. White people are like, you're white. And I was just like, sure. White, fine, whatever. So I took those compliments. But then when I got to college, there were other black geeks and I was like, whoa, what? We exist. What's happening? <laughs> so it was pretty cool. <clears throat> also our hall or our dorms were in old Victorian style houses. So everyone's room was like an actual room. And our common room was like the living room. So that was like, we all, and the rooms were huge. So we all hung out in each other's rooms and played video games together. So it was, it was cool. It was the first time I experienced camaraderie, I guess. That's cool. Does it like, is that the first time where you felt like you were able to be like proud of your identity or? Um, um, like, I mean, I was always kind of, like I, I didn't give thing? a fuck. Yeah. Okay. Cause I didn't really give a fuck that I was like a unicorn regardless. I was just like, okay, I mean, I'll just go have fun by myself. I don't need to be around people. That's not a requirement. So I'll go play video games and make myself laugh. And that's kind of what I did. And then I got to college and I was like, Ooh, other people are here and they're cool. And they like me. I guess this is cool. Whoa. Friendship. Whoa. <laughs> so it wasn't the first time that you got to experience pride, but it was sort of the first time you got to experience like pride and community. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. If, if I'm not describing it right, then I'm like putting words in your mouth. Don't let me do that. Um, but no, that's, I mean, that's super cool. That was the, the first chance to build those sorts of like friendships. Um, yeah. So um, oh I'll, I'll talk, a, I'll put a pin in that because I, I want to talk a little bit more about what all happened after college. But there, there's some more questions that I think we'll touch on similar things here in a minute. Um, what did you so you went to college for game design did you graduate with a degree in ga game design or did anything yes i did <laughs> no nope, nothing changed i graduated with that degree that's good um what what happened in your career path since uh, um <laughs> all the game jobs are in california and i'm like i'm not moving on the other side of the country so sure. i just stayed over here and now i do ui and it's okay. basically the same well it's like kind of the same it's the same principles um it pays very well and it's um everybody's it, there's, there's there's good job security here there's not very there's not very good job security in game design it's, and as a as as a as the art side um it's incredibly competitive so i in in ui it's not competitive because there's i guess a lot of jobs for us sure over here I suppose in total, there's probably a lot more UI in the world than there is games in the world, right? Yes. <laughs> so that makes sense. Guy is uh, sending a shout out to California saying that it's awesome. So that's <laughs> great. That I'm there. sure. Actually, I went there. You have there's wrong Disney like or, or yeah, lesser <laughs> Disney. Sorry. Lesser Disney's there. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, so you do UI now, but you do. You, do you find that the shared principles allow you to enjoy it um, a similar way you enjoyed game design? Uh, like, do you find um, it enjoyable to do your job? 
Yeah, when I get to design stuff, the programming, because because I also kind of have to do some back-end programming, or just programming in general, and I'm not really good at that. So that part's a struggle. Oh, this so there, there are elements that are enjoyable, but there are also other elements that are difficult and less enjoyable yes. as a result. Fair enough. Um, what do you see in the cards for your career in the future? Do you want to keep sort of doing the same thing, or is there a change on the horizon? I'm sorry, what was that question? They just fucked me up. <laughs> Fair enough. For, for anyone that hasn't realized, the lead game is a little lagged, so you'll probably see that in a second. Um, what's in the cards for your career in the future? Is there a change, or is it a lot of the same thing you're doing now? Are you happy enough that you just want to keep doing it? Probably more of the same. I mean, it pays really well. So like I, I could I could do game stuff on the side if I really, really want to. Fair enough. It's not something that needs to be a career. Yeah. Also, yeah, the industry is super cool. young and it's <laughs> it's uh, the bro <laughs> culture's there. Um yeah. job security's not there. Uh you work long hours for you have to really, really love games. Like yeah. really love games to 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 make games right now, and I don't. It's a fun hobby, but I don't love games like that. I just don't. I'm not putting in all that work for someone to be like your game's trash. <laughs> like okay, fuck I, you. I feel like most like passion driven careers, like art or performance careers, ultimately like find ways to like underpay and mistreat their workers because they're passion driven instead of income driven. Yeah. Um, and that ends up being a big problem. So there are like a few slices for people in the game industry and in acting or whatever you want to talk about that are like comfortable, but those are like the vast minority of the jobs. Um, for the most part, they're like, come here because you love games. We're not going to pay you, but if you love games, we'll yeah. like, be a game designer. <laughs> it's like, here's this um, passion project you've always wanted to work on. Yeah. Now crunch. <laughs> So uh, that's fair. All right. Um, I'm going to transition a little bit into talking about who you are now and, and sort of identity, oh. which we've talked about yeah. a little bit in your, your life journey already. What would you say are the most important pieces of your identity? Like, what are the <laughs> most important elements if you're describing yourself to someone in a few words? Um, I am a... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. What am I? Who am I? Where am Who I? Who are you? <laughs> so you gave me geek earlier. That's an important I element, guess right? so. Um, <laughs> who am I? <laughs> that's, the, that's the question posed by the Gamers Channel itself. Who am I? <laughs> the ultimate question. Are there any, just like, it, just a few shards, like... You don't have to pick the most important, just what's... I'm a weeb. <laughs> You're a weeb? Okay. I'm a weeb. A weeb and a geek. Um... <laughs> How do you feel like um, the elements of your identity have framed your interaction with the world around you? Um... Okay, well, okay, let's see. Well, I gotta get more of the elements. So I guess I'm black, yeah. I'm cool. Um, that's not an identity, I'm just cool. But I think a cool is an identity, and I think you have it. <laughs> I'll sign off on that. Okay. Black, cool. Well, black, cool. I, I literally forgot I was black Um, sometimes. <laughs> not like I forgot like I was actually black. <laughs> But like I forgot the implications of being black sometimes, I guess growing up, because I was just so oblivious to to uh uh I guess racism. Um it was funny, I was talking to my mother um recently. Fuck you, bitch. Um and <laughs> she was telling me that a lot of people in elementary school, because I was a class clown in the Mecto program with the white kids. So what I was doing was kind of, I was in the principal's office every day and I just thought I was being like wacky, cool, fine, right? And these the teachers, mostly white, were like, oh man, Austin's going to grow up to be a criminal. And I was like, I, they, didn't, they didn't say it to me, but my mom related to me later. And I was just like, what? And in the, in the Boston public school system, apparently, one teacher tried to get me arrested. He was, I mean, I knew he was racist though. He tried to get me arrested. Arrested? Expelled? Arrested. All of that. It was, I was like, ooh, okay. 
but I don't know. I'm just me and uh, I stay me. Fair enough. I think that's that's totally reasonable. Um, is there anything that you think the people that don't share these sort of elements of your identity, uh, like, is there anything it would be valuable for them to understand that they seem to be missing by not sharing those those elements of who you are? It's a really abstract question. I feel like um, maybe it's not fair. <laughs> wait, hold on. Repeat it one more time. For people who don't share the the elements of your identity, what do you think are some things that they don't understand? What are they missing um, when they interact with you? They you, know, don't you talk about the identity. you talked about being a kid and sort of like people saying, you know, he's a geek. Who are you? And you thought you were a unicorn, or you know, hmm. whatever. What are what are people? What are people who don't share your your interests and your identities? What are they missing on the other side? Is there anything you wish they understood? Nope, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, like if they don't if they don't like me, they don't like me. They don't they don't have to like me. It's it's not it's not a requirement. I'm not like oh man, you you guys are missing out. It's just like okay. I mean, if, if you if you want to not like me, you can you can you can not like me. I I'm like, I'm, there's people I don't like, and like I hope I wish them the best. You know, I just I don't care. Go go do you. I'll do me. It's that's kind of that's, that's a great answer. <laughs> I think that's the best answer anyone could offer. You don't need anyone to understand anything about you. I like that. Um, do you think your identity has ever made it easier or more difficult to fit into communities you've been a part of? Um, probably a little bit easier. Well, I mean, I guess the because people didn't know. That I was gay, right? They weren't. They weren't fully aware, and because of how I was, oh shit, I got that kill. Because of how of just quirky I was, um, they would. I think one person asked me. One person asked me, like, "Oh, are you gay?" And I said, "I don't know." And they're like, "What do you mean you don't know?" I was like, "I don't know." And then I just walked away, and they just kind of had to accept that. That's totally and so. Weird. How old were you in that? Com- when that. Like about where say your was, life is that exchange. That was probably seventeen. No, no, eighteen, eighteen. Okay. Did you ever have a like coming out, or was that just not a thing? I did. I had a okay. coming out. Well, I waited because I didn't do it because that interaction was in like um, the gap year between college. Yeah. I decided that I was going to. Ooh, bitch! I was going to wait until. I hope he dies. Oh, he's gonna get fucked up. I wait. I decided to wait until college because I saw Degrassi, and I was like, I see how these fucking bitchy ass high schoolers are on this TV show, and so I'm gonna for, I'm gonna forego the high school, even though you know Newman was cool and they they were probably would have been fine. But I was like, on the off chance that a, that a bitch wants to try something, I'm just gonna wait till college, and that's what I did. All right. And what was the what was coming out like? What did that look like for you? Um, well, it was literally day one and some, someone had, they, they had snacks in their closet cause they had, it was a makeshift pantry. That was their room. And I went in there to get something. And then I just came out and I was like, Hey guys, I'm coming out of the closet. <laughs> and that was, that was literally it. <laughs> and everyone was just like, Oh, funny joke. And, and yeah, that was it. <laughs> That's beautiful. I don't think anything has ever made me happier than like I don't think I've ever heard a better coming out story than you were just like incidentally in the closet and you were like oh I'm coming out of the closet <laughs> okay it was just nonchalant and casual okay cool um and did you widely face acceptance there in college yes um everyone is cool ooh bitch everyone is cool with it oh he's gonna die um. I didn't come out to family, I guess, until a little bit later. Well, just my mom. Sure. And she was cool with it. She actually, she wasn't cool with it, but she was only not cool with it because she's like, you went to college and told a bunch of strangers before you told me. 
So that part, she was like, come on. But uh, she, she, she did have like dumb questions, but like, I guess ignorant questions, I should say. But like that was came with the, with the, it was the ignorance of not, you know, not knowing. Sure. But yeah, yeah, it was, it was most of all, it was pretty good. Everyone accepted it. Good. Um, yeah, there was those annoying little white girls. They're like, oh, you're gay. Oh, God. I love gay people. And it's just like, oh God. <laughs> this is like, why it, it, yeah. That's why I don't tell you people these things. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like a lot of us have been there. <laughs> <laughs> Please leave me alone. There's that uh, there's that movie G Biff, right? About the like uh, girl groups that fight over the guy who's just come out because they all want a gay best friend. Um, Ooh. Say, if you haven't seen it, there's a film to I watch. It. <laughs> it's it's just about, about it. these like high school gangs of girls who are all competing to try to get this like freshly outed gay kid to be their friend because they all want uh, their gay best friend. <laughs> So he becomes I was like too, this. I was too weeby for that. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> Oni gets the shout out. I'm glad. Um, <laughs> what do you think? So I, we can transition it a little bit into talking about the server, but but to do that, I have a good question that sort of bridges. Um, what do you think are some of the key elements of building a community where people feel welcome to be who they are? Um, what are the what are the pieces to that? That looks like it was a hard question. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's like a Matt question. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, I guess it's it's fostering a place where people feel accepted and welcome, which you'd you'd think would be relatively easy, but when it's mostly you know gay men coming together, gay gay white men coming together, um, and kind of dominating these spaces, it's it's hard to do. Yeah, that I. I see that as a unique challenge as well. Um, what do you think are, what do you think is the, I don't want to say what's the answer because there's not an answer. What are some things that, that make it more plausible that the community will be inclusive? What are some elements that go into that? Um, it's hard because it's on, it's on like, it's not, I mean, this, this one, we built it from like scratch. So I guess the community that I'm thinking of, my reference point is is because because uh, Twitter, um, the gay bear community, <laughs> because it's super white and it's um not really inclusive to people of color at all. And the reason that is is because you go there, it's like okay, people go there to hook up, like, but like if you're white, chances are you're leaving with somebody. If you're a person of color, chances are you're going to be invisible unless they think you're hot, in which you're in which case you're going to be a token. So. You just have to like kind of make sure that people aren't excluding. Well, I'm gonna halt this bitch. Okay. Ah! Okay. Um, make sure that people aren't because ex- this it's a lot of microaggressions. So you kind of have to make sure that these microaggressions aren't happening or just just. I don't know how to describe it. My, we want to kill this bitch. I don't know how to describe it really, but it's like we just have to make sure that people aren't being assholes. I think and, and being and being racist and sexist and and like transphobic. Like it's just like people just need to stop. <laughs> so a lot of it in one of the main elements in your your experience is really just like watching what's happening and making sure that you're responding to that stuff to the yeah stuff, the transphobic stuff the sexist because it's, it's a slippery slope once you like ignore something then they think it's okay and then more people will show up and they think it's okay and then it just becomes like a breeding ground for toxic uh, environments and it only accepts one type of person and that's not what we try to do her yeah no i think that that makes total sense um Let's let's segue a little bit into talking just about the server. I know a lot of people are going to know some of this stuff, but uh, we almost certainly have some people here who don't. Um, so you're one of the server founders. Um, yes. <laughs> how long has the server been around? Is it two or three years? I think it was. Oh, God. Was it 2018? I think it was like the very beginning of 2018. I was, like that. I was, I've been in it two years, so I think it has to be a stretch longer than that. 
because uh, well, that's not it was not so part of the it original was... crowd. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, three years. Uh, the gamers chat says three years. It mu- <laughs> It, Patrick I think this, and this Zach is like year say seventeen. <laughs> this is this might be like like year three. I'm not. I want to say. I want to say. It's, Tim says it was, it's what? What does Tim say? Uh, Tim says it's been around since he was fifteen. So I think a good thirty years. Can we block Tim? <laughs> Why is he here? <laughs> no. Okay. So th- th- year three. Okay. <laughs> um. You're calling me a dork now, Patrick. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> Three years, four months. Okay. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Can you tell the story of how it came into be? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's not a very um, cinematic story. It was just like Matt was like, well, because Matt went to, he went to the old gamer um, party, I guess when it was the like the facebook group and so he was like hey i remember that uh boston gamers used to be a thing but it isn't a thing anymore mostly because boston's like a college town and like once the you know people go back home they kind of it died off because a lot it was a lot of like young gays if you will and so matt was like we should make a group and then i was like okay and so i pushed some buttons and made a discord server and then I made the logo and then people started showing up and then Matt started going around and be like, hey, guys, we have a thing. You should come be a part of it. And yeah. How many people were in it when you created it, like in the first 24 hours? In the first, ooh, in the first 20, I don't know. The well, first 24 just, hours. Just OK, like the first week the or so. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I want to say it was it was a, it was I don't know. We slowly, steadily got people. OK. I want to say maybe like 20, like Tim was there. He could probably maybe, if he remembers. Oh, don't worry. Tim was one of the him, first people. I'll make Tim do one of these and I'll make him tell the whole story all over again. <laughs> no, that's, that's reasonable. So 10 to 20, somewhere in there. Um, as one of the founders and one of the final bosses, uh, do you have any particular favorite memories or stories about the server? Maybe one or two? Um, it's like, wait, hold on. Out. what do you mean? What do you mean? Oh boy. <laughs> what kind of, what kind of story is about this? Oh my God. Well, I what guess the coolest about? story, the coolest story that's probably like stream appropriate. I don't have like inappropriate stories, but just like, I guess, cause I don't want to slander anyone's name, but there's some people that I don't sure. like that got kicked out of the server that I enjoyed getting to kick so like <laughs> like i don't think that type of story is probably appropriate for the stream that's what i'm saying um but okay. the first our like first meetup was at pax and we were out it was like uh seven eight of us we're on a group and we took a uh, a picture outside the diversity booth and i was like we should uh, it was like we should try to get in there next month and then and, or next year and we were, we got in and well, I mean, it was thanks to Tim because Tim knows people. So Tim got us in. That's awesome. Um, I, uh, I, the, in, incidentally, the moment of discovery of the server for me was you guys being in the diversity lounge. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a funny connection to, to my story, which we won't go into now. Um, what do you want for the future of the server? What are your not ambitions necessarily, but what are you, if if it were an ideal world, what would happen now? What would happen now is we would okay. So I guess the goal kind of right now, right? The goal right now is to get more, I guess, female and like GNCs up in the mix because it's it's super male or male presenting dominated. And so we need we need more we need I guess gender diversity. Sure. As I think you said when you said that in the message, I was like, "Ooh, that's a good that's a good term. I'm gonna steal that." So I think we need more gender diversity in this hoe. Yeah, I think that's a that's a great desire going forward. So I would I would love to have more, you know, lesbians, asexual people, non-binary. Get up in this mix, y'all. 
<laughs> yeah. Also, uh, I'll take a second to plug uh, what I'm sure Austin will agree with me. If you have ideas about how to make that more plausible, particularly if you're part of an underrepresented community, reach out to us yes. because we want that. We want ideas for it. Um, so, yeah, cool. All right. Uh, just heading into sort of the last section here. But um, before I wrap things up, I know that you, like most of us, as you've mentioned, are a geek. Um, huh? So I want to ask some questions about your geekiness. I think we would be remiss to go through um, this whole interview without uh, without. Um, oh, I got a question in chat that I want to ask. I, I apologize okay. for having missed it. So Guy asks, do you foresee the name of the server changing? Um, okay, look, bitch. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, you. You person, um, not to insult you, but this is a question. Okay, it's it's a little, it's a little, it's kind of a, it's an annoying question because it's it's the question we get at PAX all the time. It's um why gamers? It's not very inclusive to the rest. If if you first of all, I'm not redesigning the logo, so like it's gotta be G. It's gotta <laughs> be the G. Um, if 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 y'all are really serious about um, because I guess I I do agree. You know, gamers is not as inclusive as it could be, the term. Uh, it's really just a play on words, y'all, though. That's the thing. But if y'all have a better if y'all have a better name, let's hear it. All right, so we're taking suggestions. <laughs> and we It's got to be real good. We do know our communities like joy in bringing wordplay to life that has been discussed extensively in memes recently. <laughs> um, so... Yes, Austin created the logo to the, to the person asking that in chat. Yes, yes, um, I did. Yeah, in all its iterations, of which it has had many, um, I believe they have all been you, right, Austin? Yep. So. It's showing. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so to jump back to what I was going to ask before, I did not want to miss that question. That felt important. Multiple people wanted me to ask it, so I, I wanted to make sure I hit it. Um. But uh, the question's about your geekiness. You're a movie buff, right? Sure. I watch a lot of stuff. <laughs> what What's caught your eye recently? Has there been anything good? Movie? Well, I know. I've been watching movies. I've been watching mostly anime and, and just like TV shows. Okay. Recently. Uh, well, I mean, oh, 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 oh. Well, it's not a movie. But it okay. kind of harkens back to the rapid fire question of who's my favorite comedian, which is yeah. a straight up lie because... I only remembered her name because I saw her in the series Zainab Johnson. She was this really cool black woman comedian. I remember her one. She was like, I saw her um, comedy on YouTube and I was like, oh, she's real, she's so cool. And then I was watching uh, Amazon, whatever show called Upload. It's a mess show, but she was in it. And I was like, yeah, book those roles, Zainab. And I was just kind of hyped. <laughs> Fair enough. That's cool. Um, so. I'll, I promise to ask you about TV and anime. I'm just saving the best for last. Okay. Um, so I do want to know, um, and this is, I'm going to say to the chat um, before I go on, I yeah. don't watch many movies and the TV shows I watch are often not normal TV shows. So this is the place where I need useful questions from the audience because Austin is probably going to ultimately talk about things I don't know anything about. So you've okay. got to ask some questions. I'll, for I'll, give, I'll give pointers for the chat, I guess. <laughs> it should probably be a DC show. I've watched Titans um, sure. or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or anime, shoot anime questions, because I've watched a lot of anime. But I'm kind of an anime snob, so I might be snobby about it. <laughs> what are what are your some of your all time favorite films, movies, what have you? Films. Ooh, well, Into the Spider-Verse is the best movie that I've seen in my entire life, and that is no exaggeration. Uh, followed by, I guess, Spirit Away. There's another movie in here that's, that's like a live-action movie, and I can't remember what it is. I don't know. Probably, I'm so glad I didn't go to film I almost went to film school, but I'm so glad I didn't go to film school. They would have <laughs> had us. They would, cause, cause, okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing about film. I guess arts in general. is It's, well, <laughs> America in general. White, uh, oh, just white people in general. Um, it's very Eurocentric, so you're getting all these like super. Oh, look at these like super old white men making films. I think in film school you like have to watch like Birth of a Nation, which is like, why are you gonna make people sit through that garbagely racist movie? 
Like what's anyway? Um, my favorite films. I think it's just Spirit Away and um and Into the Spider Verse. Okay, uh, I am at least vaguely familiar with. I I haven't seen Into the Spider Verse yet. It's what? on my list. What the I, fuck? I you have to understand. I watch like two movies a year. Do, <laughs> have do you have Netflix? Because it's on <laughs> Netflix. I do. Yeah, I I have access to lots of movies. I just um I have a short attention span. So even if I watch oh. a movie, I watch it in like three parts because i can't focus for a whole wow movie. that's um it's actually a big problem that's really but, interesting uh, it's it's near the top of my list if i was like i'm gonna watch a movie tomorrow it would be in the top five of things i would potentially pick as i want to see it i just haven't gotten to it yet um but uh what do you think makes a great film what about those two in particular is, uh, is interesting to you uh the technicalities of film is lost to me. Um, I am not eloquent enough to express that. <laughs> well, then don't worry about the technical. Like, just what are the big things? What's awesome? What, like, it, even without talking about, like, camera shots or whatever, forget all that. What makes Into the Spider-Verse amazing? Uh, it never had kind of a low point in the movie. I think because when I was watching it the first time, I guess I'll just talk about my experience watching it. Um, we were about, I want to say 60% through the movie. And I was like, there's not, there's not been a lull in this movie that it's been like bad. And I was like, wait, why is this movie perfect? And then the movie finished and I was like, the movie got to the finale and it was like colorful. And this is like this really like colorful, fun action fight at the last, um, for the last arc, the last bit and i was like wait a minute they're literally doing everything i want them to do and it's it's working like this is this this it's it's just it's working everything is everything is beautiful so a lot of it is about just good pacing high energy things fitting together and just consistency is that the right yeah idea? sure okay awesome um I can uh, I can move into anime because I got a question in the chat about that. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, what was the anime that got you into anime? Um, it wasn't. I gotta say, it's probably not just one anime. But if I can name one, it was probably Fully Cooly. And we're not going to talk about seasons two and three <laughs> because they don't exist. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, what what anime? <laughs> Someone's put that it put fully coolly in all caps in the chat um so maybe we won't get into the which seasons are good controversy oh we can i mean it's <laughs> it's it's i mean it's very short season one and that is all okay and i can okay i'll describe <laughs> why it's bad okay. i'll describe why it's bad because the problem with season two and three is they should have did what they did for season one season one was just a bunch of like uh animators and like creatives coming together and just making something wacky from all of their fun experiences. And every episode was like crazy and they experimented and did things. But for seasons two and three, they really tried to like play off of the first season, like expand the lore, expand like the wackiness. What they should have did was they should have, cause I mean, they did get like the OG voice actors coming to voice these characters. And they even got the pillows back to play music, which is like all great, but they should have handed it over to a new animation team and had them just been like, guys, this is what Fooly Cooly was. Go have fun with it. You can use this script or you can make your own thing. But Fooly Cooly is all about being creative and crazy with your with your ideas. And I think that would probably would have been way better than what actually happened. But I did go into it. I went into it hoping for the best, but expecting the worst. And I'm glad I did because it was awful. Gotcha. Chat does seem to be in total agreement with you that season one is the only one that exists. Um, yes. So <laughs> everybody's on your side. <laughs> That's perfect. What are some of your favorite animes? Ooh, okay. Well, I recently rewatched Yu Yu Hakusho, and I can I could say that that is probably one of my favorites of all times. Um, and I really like that creator. I didn't realize he was the also the creator of Hunter Hunter Hunter, also Level E. Um, and a cool thing about this creator rewatching well i mean the representation wasn't great but it was there and there was a trans character there was a trans demon and yu hakusho and that took me by surprise because this anime came out in the 90s and was adapted from a manga which came out in the 80s and that's crazy 
that in the 80s and 90s that this person was like, you know, exploring transgender characters. And he's had one in level E. All of his, I think all oh, those three anime, those three anime also came from manga, but his manga is popular enough to get anime and they've all had um, trans and um, non-binary characters. I think in Hunter Hunter, there are non-binary characters that got changed to like females and males just because I think in the dubbings, they just, they didn't realize. And so they made them um, male and female. But I just, I recently learned that his, like uh, that Rihaka show had trans characters looking at it again. And I was like, this is really cool. That's awesome. What, um, what are the elements that make a great anime? Ooh, ooh, oh my God. Okay. So I could, I, I don't know, but I'll, I'll describe making a bad anime. Is when you have I think that to um, dump all your exposition within the first like twenty minutes of a ch- half an hour show, so it's about twenty three minutes, right? Um, give or take. If if you have more than half of the runtime wasted on exposition, what are you doing with your? I, I don't know. I watched this one anime recently. It was just the epitome of that. Like we, it started off, and this girl's just she's sitting in front of a camera and she's explaining what's happening. And why the world, she's world building for us. She's in this dilapidated world. I don't really give a fuck, but like, she's like, oh, this is why the world's going on. And then it cuts from her to another time period. So like, it's disjointed. We don't know why we're in this time period, but all of a sudden these people in this other time period, time travel to the future. And then they give their backstory. And that's like half the goddamn episode. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but this is awful. Fair enough. So it, again, it's a big pacing thing for you. It's it is a like, big. I guess it is. The, I guess so. Get to the rising action. Yeah, yeah I think some that's reasonable. Interesting characters and good character development. So, Fair enough. Um, in chat, uh, you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> um, so in chat, Poland Sam asks, "Are you watching any new anime this season?" Um, yeah, that anime that I was just talking about is new and it's garbage. Don't watch it. Um, I'm watching the second season of, or third season of Ray Zero. I watch, because I'm a filthy seasonal, so I watch all, everything, because anime runs in seasons. So where, where are we? Summer? Summer's like ending. So we're getting close to the end of summer. Um, I watch all of the things, but oh, here's the thing. It's kind of hard to watch anime properly now, because before, you know, it wasn't, it was just all on, it was all on one platform. Crunchyroll kind of had everything. And I didn't have a job when Crunchyroll was like, what the fuck is this? Um, when Crunchyroll was like first starting out. So I was pirating all my anime. Um, so now that I stream it legally, it's kind of annoying to watch because Netflix will pick up currently airing seasonal shows, but they wait till the end of the season because what Netflix does is they kind of uh, dub all of the anime in multiple languages and they have like... Um, <laughs> Closed captions for I'm gonna die. Closed captions for all their anime. So they wait. So like, um, if a show airs in the the spring, you're not getting it until the summer. And if the show goes from spring into summer, if it's like a 24 episode show, they're gonna and it's one season. They'll cut the season in half and they'll wait a whole nother season to finish the original season. What the fuck is this? That, that sounds not ideal. It's not. But then Amazon also picks up anime currently airing anime and amazon prime is garbage because they just they just have a library there's no there's no like categories for anime you, if like they'll throw it into the fucking abyss it's just like it's in there and if you know you have to look it up what's airing and be like oh does amazon have this okay well i'll go watch it but also amazon they used to have a double paywall but they don't anymore but who's paying for amazon it's kind of easier <laughs> to just pirate anime right now. But I watch everything. I'm watching all the seasonal stuff. Sorry, that was just tangent. <laughs> no, totally reasonable. Um, I'm going to head to a wrap-up just because we're, we're getting close to time. We don't have to stick to anything strictly. But okay. um, I would be remiss on a stream about the Boston Gamers to not ask uh, what, what are your favorite games of all time. My favorite games of all time would have to be Dead Cells. Probably one of my fa- I'm into Rogue Likes. So I'm over here jamming to Dead Cells. Hades! This one right here. Super Giant. We stand Super Giant. Um, oh, it's the new. I didn't even realize what you were playing. I, uh, Super Giant made Bastion, right? Yes. You did the right thing. Okay, cool. Um, 
Yeah. Those are like the only two that come to mind. Okay. What makes a great game? The the thing that I've asked you about everything. This mm. is this is your category. Ooh. You were in game Ooh. design. Oh yeah. Well, melee was good too. I like Smash Bros. Melee. I didn't have a Wii or a Wii U, so I didn't play those other ones. But melee is also probably one of my favorite games. Um, I'm really into tight, responsive gameplay. So um, the co- the pacing of just movement and controls in Hades, uh, Dead Cells, and in Melee. Melee. Well, I feel like Melee was a mistake. They didn't mean to make it that tight. They didn't. They, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh no, because yeah, the pro scene is like crazy, like wave dashing and all that. But like, it's so it's so responsive, and it's just like. It's the, okay because I can't say Kingdom Hearts is Kingdom Hearts is also kind of the favorite, but in a different way, just because it's like it's a hot fucking mess. Um, <laughs> and the, the combat's floaty, the story gets changed every two seconds, and um, ooh, three was three was a wild ride. But I guess I could call it one of my favorite games too. What makes a good game? Yeah, I think just I really I'm into the snappy responsiveness of games. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Um, <laughs> all right. I, I'll field this question from chat as well before we wrap up. Uh, Dizzy asks, "Guilty pleasure game? Anything?" Guilty pleasure mind? game? Yeah. I have no guilty pleasures. <laughs> They're all prideful or guilt. And um, I play opposite. League. Like you saw me play League. People don't like League. <laughs> um, I played uh, Overwatch for the first month that it came out. Destiny was fun. I think that these are just like games that like people don't like, but I really don't care. Oh, I played Anthem. I played Anthem. <laughs> I wouldn't call that a guilty pleasure because Heather's in here. Hold on, Sam. This bitch knows. Um, so I saw this game. I knew this game because they were trying to be like, oh, look, we're kind of like Destiny, but like cooler. And I was like, this game's going to be trash, y'all. And my college friends, Heather included, I'm calling you out. They were like, oh man, I can't wait for this game Anthem. It looks so good. I was just like, guys, it's going to be garbage. Nobody listens to me. This game comes out and I knew, I knew it was still garbage and I bought it anyway. And guess what? No one else did. They, though they bought it later. They bought it like after I did, but they were buying it and they were playing it and they're all like, oh, this game's fun, but like there's all these bad things about it. And I was like, what the fuck did I say? <laughs> It's funny because I got worried right at the end. I was excited until they were like about to release and I decided to like live subscribe for the $15 and play it oh. before I bought it. And so I saved myself because I like played it and I was like, <laughs> oh my God, no. <laughs> so I feel that. I feel for the people who bought it initially. Um, all right. I think uh, that gets to the end of my questions and our time. Um, I want to thank you again for letting me extract information from you in front of an audience. I really appreciate that, Austin. Um, there are a lot of folks that went into making this possible, so I want to try to give a shout out to all of them. I have a big thanks to Zach or Hednisk um, for running all the tech shit, which I absolutely cannot do. Um, so I, I need <laughs> I need that. I want to also send a shout out to, to Oni, who was kind enough to review my outline. There are um, very few editors that I would trust as much as Oni, so I feel very fortunate um, to have had them in my corner. Um, and a thanks to all of oh, the mods and planners who who listened to me pitch just a, a general black crazy word. idea. <laughs> who listened to me pitch this crazy idea and said, yeah, sure, let's do it, and added all of their own ideas and thoughts to how to run it. I, I really appreciate it. and. Most importantly, perhaps, thanks to you all for coming and watching this. Uh, you showing interest and showing up is what makes us keep doing this. So you're, you're, you're very much appreciated. Um, we hope we'll get the chance to continue this. So keep an eye on the chat for updates and reminders about the next time we're going to do one of these things. Do you have any final words, Austin? I'm black. That's it. Sounds Sorry perfect to me. All right. Uh, stay safe, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, I don't think I have a better sign off than that. <laughs>